one. Camera's rolling. How's everyone doing today? What up, Sam? Pretty good. Hey, Sam, you want to see what I'm working on right now? You're going to love it. Um, I was playing last night with Paul, Paul Wardy. Watch, Paul, watch Paul's eyes when, when I'm doing this. Do you see, do you see this thing behind me? Hmm? You see this little board in here? <laughs> so I'm running this C-sharp application in here. Are you running C-sharp application in that board? Look, do you, see the, do you see the lights over there? Which lights? The red light. Exactly. So okay. if, I, if I let it loose like that, do you see what I just did? Oh. <laughs> so this, this little board here, I'm gonna make it show in real time my uh, GitHub contributions. So every time you push to GitHub, it will, you know that little map that you see on GitHub, the green contribution map? Mm -hmm. This is what these boards are. They're basically cells, right? What I mean by that, let me let me switch the, the pattern here and you'll understand. Um, what I mean by that is that you can easily, check it out. Um, here we go. Color effects. Do you see? It can show mm -hmm. you your actual GitHub contributions because they're all just a bunch of cells together. I thought it was pretty fancy, especially That's for cool. YouTube and whatnot. Cool. So I'm, it's 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 really really cool. It, it has some uh, protocols and stuff in it. Let me close that so it doesn't distract people. You know, not mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I, I'm trying I'm trying to learn how to drill walls. I don't know how to drill walls, but. I, it's a little something that I was playing with, you know, in addition to 50 other things I'm playing with. But uh, I thought you guys might find this interesting, right? It's and really then, interesting. And then we go tell software engineers, hey, here's, here's how you, because it's actually motivating. Like if you look at a thing on the wall and it seems a little bit darker and darker, it'd be like, what's happening to me? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not writing code anymore, right? <laughs> okay, my friends, let's go back. So one of you owed me something. You guys oh. owe me something, right? Well, my homework. Your homework. Let's do it. Let's go, Sam. Okay, okay. Ain't nothing but a thing, one sky man. Let's put uh, some code on the white fire grid. People call the internet. Let's do it. Let's I need do Uta. It. Or like Paul Ooh. likes to say. Oh, what's ah. my homework? Ooh, ah. You're supposed to make the test pass. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you make it pass? If, if you broke something else, that's also a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first, first of all, uh, the test was the test was failing for one good reason and one bad reason. And I did a comment in there. I said, "Go investigate." Uh, do you still remember the the test, test name? name? You know, if you go to the public, if you scroll up, Sam, in the page that you're in, and just click that references on the method. And then just find the the logic one, the business layup. Yep, that's it. Do you see the business logic one? Yep. Double click, click, click. There you go. There you are. Is this test case? Yep, that's the test case. Oh wait, why is it passing? Is it from before? No, no. Is it in Should the right or or expression is sync? Should uh, it's a process. But here it should uh, generate all expression. That's right. Should uh, should process all data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should generate, but you. So what I did was I created. This one, right? Yeah. Not. This should, uh, should say should process. You're right. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. So it's different. So it should be here. To the generator, it's this yeah. one. Yeah. So where is this one? That one's passing as well. Uh, all expression. It's not. It's is... old. It's from before. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. No, I make it uh, pass. I think. You made it pass. Mm -hmm. How did you make it pass? Here's a change, right? Where is the change? Here's a change. Oh, you did the thing. Nice. Yeah, and I think it can pass the test. Let's see. He's showing off. He's very proud of his work. Look at it. Okay. It's create a pull yeah, create a pull request, my friend. 
Oh, did you pull in the thing that we figured out like literally two minutes after the last stream? What? I think so. Do you remember you? We were having problems with getting values from enums. Yeah. Get, getting a random value. Um, yeah. Oh, I actually, ended, Sam. I up, uh, go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say I ended up posting a, a solution. You said, "Yeah, that's what we should use." It was like four lines of code or something. Sam, uh, commit this and give it to Paul to do a code drop and fix our enum generation, please. Yeah. Say, so, uh, Paul, take it. Take it. Take it. If you, if you can. I can uh, take it. I can take it. I'm the world greatest. Everyone it. should work. Everyone should work. Everyone. Everyone. Should work. Right, Sam? Next option, Paul. <laughs> I don't like working. I have an aversion to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Zoom in a little bit, sir. Uh, oh, is it a bit big, a bit small? Bit something a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of this a little bit of that yeah there you go right uh which branch are we in coordinate a query process uh, same the, one what, what's the branch called sam if you don't mind filter property expression search for property after you fetch so media media dude just search for property go to remote type property Right. You didn't fetch right. You didn't fetch right. There it is. You got yeah, it. This one. This one. Oh, sorry. Oh. It's not property. It's property. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. that... <laughs> <laughs> Look at it scratching. <laughs> <laughs> Should we say pro? Proper A. Proper A. Proper right. A. <laughs> uh, right. Well, where it, it was in a test, wasn't it? It was in the. Was it the coordination service? The root. Expression. In the root. In this one. Dude, it's, foundation. it's a it's it's a foundation service, right? It's in the. Was it a foundation? Was it? Foundations. Uh, All expressions. Expressions. Tell him, Sam. Tell him. Expression. <laughs> yes. It... There you go. So, where is the one that generates? If you scroll down a little bit, do you see the one that says "get enum" that is not this one? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Show us so, your thing. Let's see. Um, probably it's... best that I pull the last. It's in uh, the thread, I think. Yeah, it's in the thread. Right. Okay. Here one we second. go. One second, getting some woo ah, woo ah. Uh, Actually, -ah. Keep, keep the solution that you've got. Right. So if I grab this, uh, a private static. What's this complaining about? It because have the same master defined oh yeah because yeah so yeah um so what yeah what we had was this and we we went down a really weird rabbit hole during our last stream and as per usual as soon as we finished live <laughs> 30 mm -hmm. seconds later i was like why don't you just do this <laughs> so, so what is that get values type off d and then all values accept that nice so and what then... this does yeah, is this this gets a, a T array effectively? Probably be a bit more descriptive. Yes. It? And then you I'm just using a link, a link accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's try that, it. That saves us having to do the comparison, I suppose, doesn't it? Let's try Can it, dude. Uh, please put a new out. line between the return and the value and specify that var that you created. What is that var? What's uh, that what's the value is, of it? An mm -hmm. integer. Cool. And okay. and but next to the zero and the length, just do control period so you can add in the uh, add in the variable name, like the parameter name. So do control period here. Control. And then just add uh, argument names. You see, add argument name including trailing arguments. 
Go back. Control Z. Control period. Second option to the one that, yep, there you go. Look at you, smart no. <laughs> okay, if you're going to do that, then break the second variable to the next line. And the first variable as well. Done. That works think... too. Yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, Sam would so... like to screw this. <laughs> I guess we just we just rerun all these tests now, right? It's Let's do it. Crazy. Let's run the test. Actually, can you do me a favor and run a uh, run until fail test? Do you know how to do that? Uh, yeah, isn't it in here? Uh, I showed it to you once. I thought. Yeah, I think you might have done a long time ago. Uh, uh, run until failure. Here we go. Yeah, but you need to run until failure only on that test because of the internal mock. Thing. By the way, someone sent me a message on Instagram today. Said that they needed this library. We you, we really need to fix it, Paul. We Turn really, them on. Really... yeah. I think it might be wise for us to just do a session on it because then we can brainstorm. We'll probably not solve it, and then we'll do another session on it because, like, five minutes after the session, we'll solve it. Yes. So listen, go go to that particular test, that one test that we care about. What? Where's the test? Why are they not showing? That's what I was just trying to figure out. Do you have Visual Studio? Yeah, yeah. I, I used it once. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Uh, right, Let's go, so Ward. Should... Let's go. <laughs> Foundations of expressions, right? Foundations. Foundations of expressions. Of expressions. There. Here we go. They're all passing. That's yeah, right click. Right. right click on that. And yeah. then run until fails if you can't. No, Does I don't it give have you the option, option if you oh, right yeah. click. Until failure. Here we go. Okay, okay. So a thousand iterations. That's going to yeah, take a while. Yeah, it, it'll just take a sec. Did you know about this, Sam? Mm hmm? Did you know about this, what he's doing? Do you see he's running it a thousand times? We're going to break it probably earlier. I just want to see if here. the... I want to see if the randomization is actually working. I like that there's also a progress bar down there saying, hey, here's where I'm at. You know, in terms of these, um, by the way, his his GPU is going to be overheating in a second. It's just going to start screaming, you know, or CPU is going to be heating up in a second. It's going to be uh -huh. fun. So, Paul, while you're doing this, speaking of which, let me show you the new thing that I'm about to buy, you know, and tell me if you think it's a good gig, good rig. Why does it run so slow? No, it's yeah. not running slow. It's running a thousand times. Okay. My CPU is at twenty six percent. It's gonna go a little bit higher in a bit. Give it a sec. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. While you're doing that, sir, tell me what you think about this machine. I buy power. This is this is the rig that I'm trying to, you know, get. And tell me if you think it's cool. Uh, gaming PCs, all gaming PCs. This here is. Hang on. I love I love when there's a list like this, and you hit the last option, and it's just an empty an empty page, just an empty page, right? And you're thinking to yourself, hmm, that doesn't sound right, right? So here, what I want to do is that this is the case, right? And I'm going to kind of max out on the the RAM. And so the let's start with the processor. I'm going to make the processor that 13K one. You know what I mean? 13K. Yeah. The, so the 13900KS, right? Or the KF. Th th yeah, 13900, right? So that's one. Oh, I like this one more. Okay, so let's have this one. And then on the GPU, I want to get the... Hey, do, uh, do, they, do they not have a 3900KF anymore? What do you mean? This one is uh, 1300, uh, 13, uh, 13,900KF. Yeah, but that's a KS. If you look at the one below, the 12th gen version, it's a yeah. KF. What's the difference? 
the F and the F, they mean something different. I remember thinking that it's a KF you want, not a KS. What's more powerful? I can't remember why. There was some reasoning behind it. I, I'd, I'd have to look into it. But. As long as it runs Visual Studio, bro. So yeah. in here, uh, what I want to do with this, I want to put in the 4090. The 4090 is the cool one, right? I'm thinking. 49. Yeah, it, it, you need to get like a power supply just for the graphics card. <laughs> right. They have 4090 here, so I just selected it. This is 4090 24 gigabytes. Okay, and then let's up the power supply on this. Which one do we have? I'll put this one here. Right, and then uh, what else do we do? The, the memory? Where's the memory? There it is. Now, what I'm hoping for memory is 64, but they don't get... Oh, there's 64. There you go. How cool is that? G-scale, if you know the difference. No, you want the DDR5 stuff. Where Scroll are down. you? Where are you? Oh, uh, DDR5? Down. Yeah. So DDR5, they have only like 30, 32. Like this. Yeah. And then I can't. So do you have, is Corsair Vengeance good? I know that Corsair Vengeance is good. Yeah, I think that's the stuff I've got in mine. Well, mine's, uh, mine's DDR5, but I think it is Corsair Vengeance. How many do you have? 32 gigs or 64? Uh... Check in 30, 32, yeah. Just 32? You know, this gig that I have right here has 64. Or 120. <laughs> Ram, RAM's a funny one, right? Because you you think that you're going to use 64, but you rarely do. Like, you, you're not going to do it and, unless you're doing something really crazy in memory, right? Yeah. But like, how often do you do that kind of thing? Like, if, if you took like the latest AAA game with all the features turned on, your bottleneck is going to be mm -hmm. your GPU. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be your RAM. It's never going to be your CPU. Yeah. You could run in modern times, you could run on like a 10th gen Core i7 processor with like DDR4 low spec RAM. And as long as you put a 4090 in there, you could max out every setting you wanted and it wouldn't make any difference. Okay. The only difference that you'd see is during the working day, your compilations would be a bit slower. So so hang on. Here's a question for you. I have eight terabyte um, solid state drive. Should I get eight terabyte? I don't know what I'm going to do with eight terabyte, honestly, Paul. So what I tend to do is I get a small um, primary drive, which is like... Um, One tera? like a fairly cheap one yeah and what, then I, what gen do you have i see m2 gen 4 m2 i see ssd solid state yeah so you you put like a gen 4 um gen 4. primary and then a gen 5 secondary and put like an eight terabyte in there so then what i do is i put all my data that my working data on the gen 5 and mm. run the operating system off the gen 4. So if you think about it, you'll have a C drive and a D drive, and your D yeah. drive is what you're actually working on, and that will be, you know, shit hot, mutts, nuts, quickest you can get. And the C okay. drive just needs to basically load Windows on boot. <laughs> okay then. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the. Uh, I don't see Gen five. It's just Gen four. Yeah, unless you get a um, PCI Express five board. Mm. There's, depends on the model of the machine that you get but not always so they give you a, a gen 5 option um or am i thinking i'm thinking wrong aren't i yeah it's gen gen 4 is the latest on that isn't it yeah is that right if uh, ash is here he would have he would have known but you know is there anything else i need to care about other than this i have 4090 24 gigs of memory i have Power supply, the most powerful. Oh, right. I have the most powerful one. And I have uh, primary storage. I yeah. have. Uh, there are Gen 5 P PCI Express. Uh, oh, really? NVMe drives, yeah. Maybe so, the motherboard that I selected is the reason. The motherboard that I selected is uh, ASOS Rogue Maximus. It's the highest one. Yeah, I just don't. It might be that they're, they're not actually out, out yet. 
Oh, okay. Um, so the latest you can probably get on the retail market at the moment. You'd, you'd probably have to do some digging on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want us want us to drill through it all, um, probably okay, something okay. worth doing offline, I would have thought. Yeah, I'm, it's just me waiting for your test to pass. That's how I keep things interesting. Uh, we're up to, to uh, six hundred iterations out of a thousand. Yeah, I think I think that I think that's enough. You can close it, and let's just create the pull request. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, is this this is just a code rub, right? Yep, code drop all uppercase, and then just simplify uh, simplify uh, random enum generation. This is actually by far probably the most elegant solution that we have by far. Uh, well, I, I did have another think about it, but I thought, yeah, I, I could think of ways to like condense it down because Tim came up with like basically a one liner. But I thought could, you, oh, you're was, then at a point it? where it's just more smart than it is intelligent. Um, probably was not it right Tim or words. Parker? Oh, both of them. But Parker's solution yeah. was a little bit harder to read. Yeah, it probably. Yeah, it's smart, yeah, but not in a good on. way. It's smart, but not in a good way. That's what I thought. Yeah, this is probably like the best of both, right? In that it's shorter, but it's also the most maintainable Readable. option that we could yeah. come up with. Um, I couldn't That's think fair. of anything. Yeah. Um, we all good, yeah? Yeah, let's go. Let's push. Create a pull uh, request, Paul. Create PR. Uh, oh, you want me to share that, don't you? That would be a great idea. Present. <laughs> So what do you think about that machine? Do you think that's a good machine? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, it's really powerful. What do you not, want? Not not really, Sam. There is a there is a uh, you know Dell has this workstation. It goes up to forty two thousand dollars. But I think that's what? like more for yeah. I think it goes for, for more like data processing. It has like it has like two two gigs uh, sorry it has like two terabytes of ram two terabytes of ram what else are they putting in there then is it like dual platinum xeons or something 100 128 microprocessors it's a server basically who needs that in a desktop oh, i don't think on. so it's just an overkill yeah okay dude so type in uh medium fix all uppercase uh, medium fix and then um and then just say you know uh um fake fix uh fix issue with uh link expression generation oh that poor baby's coughing everyone's sick these days oh, yeah <laughs> there you go there you go watch out sam it's going around I think I think I think the Brits send it over. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, dude, let's go. It's my goal in life is to just send you over all the COVIDs. <laughs> <laughs> just I don't have to deal with it here. I'll feel better about that. <laughs> so, I have to take a look at his PR and let's go. <laughs> the more so, you complain about it, the better. <laughs> right, Sam. <laughs> So, so listen, Paul, the only thing that we have left here now is basically uh, this method that Sam wrote to kind of uh, convert a, an expression, you know, it actually um, applies an expression. Uh, and where would that fit in? We can't put that in the exposure layer for sure. Um, we need to put that somewhere. And that somewhere needs to kind of do that processing for us. Um, I'm thinking maybe a broker with a service with the whole nine yards all the way upstream, just an idea, or something else. And I don't know what it is, but we have a demo on the 24th. Sorry, the 22nd. So um, I just wanted to see what your thoughts are about this and where this would belong, just to kind of refresh your memory. You know, for We, if we, we only used one orchestration service, right? So it was a single dependency. Well, well, we have a um, we have a coordination service as well, but the one thing that I wanted to kind of press on really hard is, let's see here, Paul. What's what's what am I uh, what am I talking about here? Uh, GitHub, watch this. So, 
remember the draft that we created, the, the working prototype. In that working prototype, we have a, um, we had put this method here. Do you see that method here? Yeah. So a lot of this needs to go behind a broker. Like all of this probably needs to go behind a broker, right? And this broker will need a service on top of it. It could be an O expression service. That's okay. Like we could piggyback on the existing services that we have. That's okay. We can do that. However, um, I just wanted to run this by you guys because it's going to take a little bit of work and effort. Could, could we not just put it in the coordination service behind behind the call that we're actually making? And, and the coordination service can do that piece for us. Or we could make it part of the coordination services API, if you see what I mean. Well, you, you can, but the problem is how do you mock and test these? You have no option here. Like this yeah. is all native code. Yeah, well, isn't that where acceptance tests come in? Because then you're doing essentially an end-to-end. -end. Well, acceptance tests will come in, but acceptance tests is just another layer on top of the unit test. Oh, you're saying, you, yeah, if we put it in the coordination, you'd also want to unit test. Precisely. But you're saying if this code goes into a broker or behind a broker... There's no logic in it. Yeah. It'll um, be quick. It'll be just a broker and a service. And we're basically the broker and the service are the ones that will take maybe a session. And then after that, we're using that upstream. So we're basically just kind of doing a, a, a pass through. Because if you think about it, there is actually no value in giving the customer back an expression. What they really right. want is, is the actual I queryable that they passed in. Mm. Most so that, of, uh, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, Sam. go ahead, go ahead. I mean, most of scenario, yes, customer just needs the I queryable. Yep, that's all they care Quite about. With the credit stream. So, but so now sometimes I'm... customer in this expression can do other things. For example, they want to append or mm -hmm. customize the expression for non audit expression, something like this. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So, in this case, they don't need the equitable, or maybe yep. they can get the equitable and do the expression. No, 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 we can get offer the both. more. It's okay. We can give them both, but I'm just thinking this dot o data neo neo dot and then you have you know apply filters and then you have your students and you have your select equal you know <coughs> I don't know uh, ID something like that. So correct me if I'm wrong here, mm. but you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> obviously yeah um you, you said there's basically no code in it no business logic right so you could put the code that we had there in a broker but equally you you could put that code into into an exposure right no because because there's no business logic there's no business logic but you're gonna have to use that co that code to orchestrate something else like the code in and of itself doesn't do the job. You need to orchestrate it with something that generates an expression so you can apply that expression on the collection. So there's three things, the code, the collection, and the expression. And that orchestration needs to happen behind a service. I, th I think I'm having some difficulty here understanding like this aspect of the standard. So look, 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 let me explain. My look. Okay. Look, you have, let's call this code the expression apply code, right? So this is, you know, this here is expression executor, executor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have a collection. That's the I queryable that the customer is giving you. But you also have an expression generator or converter, 
the one that takes in your OData query and gives it back to you as an expression. Who's gonna orchestrate? Who's gonna orchestrate between these two? You need something sitting here in the middle that basically goes and says, give me that collection with the query. So that's a collection and a query, an OData query, the raw query that's coming in. So this is OData query. And let me go and orchestrate. Let me take this and this. Let me go here, get the expression. And then let me go and get that expression. Uh, sorry. Let me take that OData query here. And let me go generate an expression from it. But also let me go take that collection. And let me apply that very expression to that collection here. Who's doing that orchestration? What do you right. mean the collection? Hmm? So is, is the collection is the in memory date? The collection? Hmm? The collection is the que the iQueryable, the students, the thing that the customer is giving you to apply the expression. Oh, okay. So what is the query is a is a query string. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so, so, so this will be like imagine this. This is a list of students. Whatever. And this here is your dollar sign select equal name student ID. Go ahead. So the expression generator in this diagram is our coordination service, right? Today, yeah, this is our coordination service. We want to give it more power to offer just one one solution that can take a collection and a query and does that orchestration underneath for us. Yeah. So you're saying the thing that's going to sit above that, that's going to... I guess it behind the exposure at this point. Mm -hmm. So th that circle that you've drawn on the diagram there is mm -hmm. two things, right? You've got an mm -hmm. exposure point and you've got some kind of orchestration. Yeah. So instead, what I'm saying is that this guy sits here. Um, oh, so under the coordination service. Yeah. To be part of the O expression service. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That's, that's, that was why I was getting confused, because I was like, hang on a minute, you want to orchestrate a coordination? No, 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 listen, this is why I use boxes. <laughs> my my way of explaining things in just words, look, we're not poem, we're not, po we don't write poetry anymore, right? So just saying things to engineers is not enough. I have to draw boxes. So the coordination service has how many dependencies at the moment? Well, <laughs> well let's go. let's go back to the coordination service real quick. What yeah. we're going to do is that we're going to piggyback on top of an existing foundation service that could offer the outside of the box. So if you look at our coordination service, the O queries, this service today has the following dependencies. It has two dependencies. Good. It so has to put the third one in there or just make the the I query orchestration service to be the one doing that for us. Because oh, you're going to have to split and marry. You can't have an orchestration service with one dependency. That's the beauty about this project. You're making me talk about the hot, the higher order business logic or hyper advanced business logic that's in the orchestration coordination services. So so let's just go inside this guy here, that iQuery orchestration. If you go inside that guy here, it has process uh, oQuery, right? And what it's really doing is that it's going and saying, give me the uh, <laughs> O expression and generate an expression like that. Why did we add the O SQL service and O query service? Does anyone remember? Is this a missing piece in our code? So the the O SQL bit mm. <coughs> was used was translating expressions into SQL queries, right? And the, o, and the O query, I think, was the EF consumption piece, wasn't it? Oh, we said, yeah, no, I remember. We said that we're going to have, okay, cool. This even makes things even easier because now this O expression service, look, this O expression service now is required to be able to um, apply, apply an expression on something. The problem is how do we do that without breaking the contract? Because you have one contract in here. Okay. So either we're going to have to take the expression and 
the collection and return the collection. That's fair. We can do that. What I'm basically saying here is something that looks like this public value task I queryable of T, right? And then we go and say apply expression. And this will take in uh, O expression, which is O expression, in addition to I queryable of T, which is input, like that. And we can throw this whole method away completely, right? And we can actually truly orchestrate in here because now you're only calling just the one service, even though we have plans to add the rest of those. But if you piggyback on top of I expression service in here, one sec, we can just have this O expression uh, here. We can we can literally just have this I expression broker do that for us, like apply expression. Yeah. So there is still a tiny bit of work ahead of us because this will generate an expression. Yeah, great. You're generating an expression, but we also need another thing setting up in here that says public I queryable T apply expression. Here it is. And then this apply expression will basically take in an expression and I <laughs> did you see what the AI just did? Anyway, something to that effect. Which is funny because that was Sam's original solution, but it didn't work for us. We're going to have to do it his way. What's the relationship between the broker and between this method and the broker? That's a good question. We the, have the incredible, we have the expression. You can do it by yourself. It's it's just no relationship. <laughs> yeah, but but how do you test drive that? Sam? Like if you put that code, you need that code needs to go somewhere. Test what? The test of applying the expression on the input. Which expression? The, the expression. expression or the O expression? No, the e expression, e expression, not O expression. You want to test the expression on the input. Yes. As part of a broker. I think either we're we're breaching our purity terms here in the um because of the return type? Yeah. Or what I think you're suggesting is that we have some kind of entity type which is a container for an expression and an I queryable. Oh, is that where you're going? You know what? You're not wrong. You could actually, you could overload O expression. Oh, that's not bad at all. So O expression, what does it have today? It has the raw query. We could also have O expression carry the data. Yeah. Right? And that's data. But that means that O expression is going to have to have a type because T here is not going to work. That'll break your entire world. Yeah, that will cause problems, which is why I was saying a new entity type rather than cannibalizing an existing one. Got and it. then that's a thing that might own potentially an O expression and an I queryable. Um, and then you can pass that all up and down all over the chain. We can say oh, we can we can create a new type called O expression collection. Um, yeah, potentially. I'm I'm thinking about the the future pain points here because yeah. it's going to be recursive in nature. We're going to be in and out of all sorts of weird services. Mm -hmm. We're going to find ourselves in loops at the coordination level and all sorts of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. It's putting so what, the standard to a test in a yeah. real world problem. Mm -hmm. So what we really don't want to do is give ourselves a way out now <laughs> that packs us into a corner as soon as we add filter services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to get a lot more interesting once you start implementing filter and iterate recursion and all that. But we're up for it. We're having fun. It's like an ongoing podcast. 
except that instead of just us talking into the wild, we're actually producing something. We're building something. This is the best kinds of podcasts. You're talking, you're having fun with friends. You know, you're talking about all kinds of stuff, but you're also being productive. This is the kind of work environments that I create with my teams. Whilst berating them along the way. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you got to keep things interesting, right? But, but only if they're Brits. <laughs> oh, so I, only if they speak funny. That's right. So, <laughs> so listen, um, here's, here's what I have in mind. You understand the problem now, right? You understand that we need somehow something and we need to stick to our rules because if we stick to our rules, what the standard can guarantee is that your system, no matter how complex it is, it will continue to stay maintainable at level zero. Like anyone who understands the standard will be able to maintain whatever project you're working on. You need that. This whole uh, mythology of the genius engineer that will maintain all the projects all the time is dumb. It's not real. You're going to get old, you're going to get tired, and you're going to get busy. So if your code is non-maintainable, then you shot yourself in the foot. You shot your own legacy in the foot. Because if you can't write software, software that works, any clown out there can build that. Software that works and is maintainable, that's higher level of engineering. Software that works and is maintainable and has community behind it to support and answer questions, that's the epitome of real software engineering, including mechanical engineering for the Mr. Ghost that left the comment the other day. Did you see that one, Sam? <laughs> I don't know if you saw that one. Mr. Ghost, he said the real engineering is the mechanical engineering. Anyway, so... <laughs> the rest of us are just poser fakes. The rest of us are just, you know, <laughs> yeah, who are these people, right? So, so look, you know, uh, ju just for the people watching, if if you haven't seen this, I had someone kind of getting out of their way the other day. He went into the standard team. The standard team is basically a standard um, uh, sets of things that builds engineering cultures. There's the standard codex. There's so many different things, St standard systems design, things that I'm working on long term and taking my time with it. But the, the funny one was the, where is it? Am I not able, uh, you, uh, yeah, there it is. By the way, Paul, what I realized that he created two issues, not one. He created two, did he? Two, right? And hey, stop being disrespect. He went wild. He just went wild, and oh, he's nice. basically saying, "You're Hassan. You're being disrespectful. Uh, you know, your posts in response of your videos and posts and reposts, which you make very disrespectful claims and lies about engineers. Mechanical engineers are the only real engineers." Yeah. <laughs> you know, someone may argue that uh, software engineers are doing, you know, things that might be life threatening today. Software fakes. <laughs> software <laughs> fake engineers. So anyway, he went crazy, right? Oh, you responded to. That's right. So yeah. anyway, it's it's just a it's just one of these silly nonsensical. And I didn't even bother deleting it. I'm just gonna leave it there. But uh, you know, I just realized you know, that this happened. I don't know if GitHub banned the guy because this is just a placeholder account. It has like 7,000 followers. Uh, this placeholder really? account is what your, it, it's what your tag name gets replaced with when your account gets kind of deleted or banned or whatever. Anyway, so Brilliant. listen, you understand the problem, right? Back to this. You understand the problem. You understand what's what's happening, right? Ghosts we need to come machine. up with a solution. Huh? Ghosts in the machine. Ghosts that's in the, the machine. Problem. <laughs> that's, that's the real problem. People <laughs> randomly, I mean, he got out of his way and he wrote a, you know, a wall of text, right? He must have been really angry. But then again, I, I think about it. I was like, did he actually, he actually did read my blog post and watch my videos and read my repos. So he put in time and effort there. You know what I mean? Don't worry about that. You know, I'd that's... be curious to have like a sit down chat and be like, okay, where did Hassan lie? What 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 specifically did he say that you objected to? <laughs> I never I never even wrote anything about mechanical engineer. I didn't know anything about it. So oh, if you're watching, we're not engineers because we're not making engines. <laughs> yeah. 
We are the engine of a change. I, I tell I tell my team this all the time. Say you're engineers because you're the engine of change. You know, that's what you're meant to do. But a little bit of drama is great for social media. People love drama. Oh, my God. You know, if you watch the, some of these YouTube videos where people break up and then they get back together or they kick someone off the team, you know, it's just drama. <laughs> just people, people love drama. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> I'm not big on it. I'm just trying to be productive. The one thing, and, and Sam, this is what I always tell people, and then Sam, Sam probably understands this, he's more pragmatic than any engineer I've ever seen, but the, the drama goes away, and what's really left is what you produced. What did you create? What really stayed in there, right? Uh, is it a thought, a good thought that people will remember? Is it a good feeling? Or did you actually create something? Did you create something useful? that people can use. That's really what matters. Everything else doesn't matter. Let me ask you a question, Paul. This is a smartwatch, right? Hmm. I I have used the Samsung smartwatches since, the, since their first release. The one that had like the Mr. Inspector gadget little camera. It used to have a little camera here on the side, right? I have no idea who created these watches other than it's just Samsung, right? I don't know what kind of drama people had to go through. Do you know what matters? The product. It's here. It works. Nobody cares about how it got here. Right? So if people want to make drama, it doesn't matter what did you produce at the end. What's your impact? What did you really create? And there's a lot of distractions. Like you'll see a lot of distractions, you know, while you're building something. Some people will hurt you for no reason. Right? Some people will see you intimidating. Some people will see you as a threat, you know. I was just talking to someone the other day. Actually, it was just this morning. You know, she said, oh, I had some terrible bosses and whatnot. And I said to her, do you know how terrible bosses are created? Someone who kiss up is a sycophant, a kiss ass. So someone promoted him because he's a kiss ass. He doesn't have a backbone. He doesn't have to speak from themselves. Number two, someone who's good at what they do, but they don't have people experience. Like they ha they're good. Like they're good software engineer as an individual contributor. But they're really terrible at managing and communicating with people. That's number two. And then number three, the most dangerous one, someone who's been around. So they made them a manager just for being around. You know what I mean? Oh, well, Paul has been around for 15 years. I guess it's time for him to put him up there and make him a chief. If you end up with a boss that has that reached up there for one of these three reasons, run really fast. Because that's how basically you create toxicity in the workplace and whatnot. And again, people's skills, charisma, being able to communicate with people, it's a completely different skill set than being an engineer. In fact, actually, there are people out there that are just managers. They have no technical skill sets, but they're engineering managers. They call them non-hands-on. They're not hands-on engineering manager. Anyway, so listen, coming back to this, you know, and I'm trying to kind of diversify here topics and stuff like that, also because I have ADHD. So that's 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 another fun topic. Um, what I want to do is that we need to come it's up with candy. a solution. We need to come up with a design solution. We need to come up with a way to put this code that Sam came up with in a broker and communicate that all the way up to that coordination service. And then we will have one API that our exposure layer will be calling. And that API will be the API that goes and says, hey, execute on this collection. I think we still have time before we make our big demo on the 22nd. We still have a little bit of time. Cecil given, Williams, want, huh, go ahead, go ahead. Given the um, native sort of reusable nature of it, could this be a support broker thing? No, because it's fundamental to the business. Like it's, it takes entities. It knows about your entities. Your utility broker doesn't know about entities like date time, logging. It doesn't care whether you're passing a student or a cow. It doesn't care. But this one, it takes, it takes an iQueryable, right? Which is a framework of, thing. Of a T. Of T, yeah. Uh, but iQueryable is the interface really, isn't it? iQueryable, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like it's taking a native thing in, in and it's giving a native thing out. The fact that there is some entity T in there as well is somewhat irrelevant, right? That's all stuff that our service stack does, you know, 
Well, well, that's that's the whole idea of entity brokers. They deal with models. Yeah, but what I'm saying is specific. this isn't this isn't this isn't exposing an entity, if you know what I mean, to do operations on an entity. This is exposing an I queryable that happens to be of type T, which is the entity. So it's it would be like like if date time was generic. You'd say, well, no, what I care about is I date time. I'm I'm caring about date and times. I don't care about like what kind of thing it is, but no, that's a bad example. That's a shit example. I'll shut up. <laughs> no, no, I was thinking if, if it could be treated like a um a support broker, then you could just inject it, you know, straight into the, the coordination. It's not, it's not a support broker, it's fundamental, it's entity. It knows about yeah. the like when like your uh, your storage broker factory it returns an iQueryable of T, doesn't it? Um, yes. Is but it a... to be fair, um, mm -hmm. in that instance, the the way that you implement storage brokers, that sto one storage broker is aware of all T's that the business logic supports. Yeah, but that doesn't make it a support broker. It makes it an entity broker because it operates on some entity, whether it's specific or generic. Yeah. It's fundamental to the business. Like today, if you drop the, the logging broker or the date time broker, you might use some validations. You might lose some logging, but your core business logic doesn't break. Like you still can add a student with or without a date time broker. You still can add a student without a logging broker. You understand? It's a support utility broker. It's not. It it's right. it doesn't play a. It's yeah, not yeah, a. Yeah. It's not a showstopper. It's not a showstopper. Hmm. Right. Some people. Yeah. Will argue, I know that some people will kill me on this. Some people will argue and say, "Well, if there is no validation, there is no business logic." No, that's not true. You have your logic, and then you have your validations, and then you have your exception handling. Hmm. So that core guy, that critical path, if it doesn't rely, whatever brokers you rely on for that critical path, these are entity brokers. And by the way, just so you understand, there are scenarios where the services use the date time broker to stamp a date time. And it's still not an entity broker because you still can't get that for free in the database. Like your database could do the stamping for you. Hmm. But this is a really super gray area. Like I don't even have a, I don't have a definitive answer to that question. But anyway, just just circling back to this one, we need to add this somewhere. Somewhere we need to add it, even if we have to create another brand new broker. That's okay. Okay, we can call it I expression broker or I expression apply applier executor broker. I'm okay with that. Okay, friends, just think yeah. about the architecture, please. And then let's connect on Monday. 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 Sam, you're very hard to get a hold of. Where, 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 where are you on Monday? In a black hole. <laughs> Monday. Next Monday. Yeah, this coming Monday. Okay. Uh, You'll be learning how to be a real engineer instead of a fake one for a change. I should be I should be good <laughs> on Monday. Do you guys want to do like 12 p.m.? 12 p.m.? It's okay. 12 p.m. is okay? Yeah. Let's do 12 p.m., uh, Paul. Sam. Let, yeah, let's get this done. You know, let, you know, the only way for us... What is it, Sam? Go ahead. What is it? I mean, um, uh, do your homework during uh, weekend. Just yeah. think about architecture. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, Paul, you're supposed to come up with an architecture for this. That's your assignment this time. Do you, do I, you have a draw IO diagram with everything we've already built already, or do you want me to build one? Build one. I, okay. I'm pretty sure it's in one of our videos. If you go into, look, if you go to the recap, hold on. That's why I did the recap. Fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll build one from the code base and I'll commit it as well. As a it's probably going to be more, the one that you're going to build from the code base is probably going to be the most truthful you know, and, and I don't know, uh, you know, uh, Brian, Brian Parker, if you're listening, if you want to build this for us, something that looks at the code and builds a draw IO diagram for us, I'd be really, really grateful. 
I could use something like that. Weirdly, it's an idea that I was toying with myself. I, I really want to have a go at it, but it's a time thing, and I'm not. My my problem would be like the interacting with um, the Visual Studio API and drawing mm. things. But yeah, I mean, if somebody out there's got that expertise, um, doing all the business logic behind that would be a piece of cake. Mm. It would be a case of we we'd have to build something that's much like um, something like Mermaid. Yeah, Have you guys ever dealt with that? Yeah, Mermaid. Is, yep. It's basically its own diagramming language. Yep. You can, so it's you... JavaScript underneath, but you can basically, yep, I know what you're talking about. Mermaid, yeah. and, and, and the beautiful thing is that GitHub supports it outside of the box. And once we do that, we need to save it in our repo, Paul. So we need to save it, Mermaid, GitHub, there. But hmm. my thinking is it would be something like that, but um, more focused, more constrained on what's acceptable within the standard. Yes. Um, and my thinking yes. was as well that we could not only generate the diagrams from the code, but also we could draw diagrams and, and then ask the diagram, which pieces of my code don't conform to this? Or oh, that would be beautiful. Are, yeah, or like which pieces are missing? And it could just mm -hmm. generate you the interfaces and the boilerplate empty methods with yep. throw move not implemented or whatever and give you That's... an empty test case to start building them. That's up the alley of Standard Lee and Christo, Christo Dutui and all these and these folks. Yeah, he would yeah. he would love. So so okay. So listen, dude, this is the diagram. This is how it looks like today, right? What we're gonna do is that we're gonna drop one of these services, you know, and add a new one. And one of these new ones, it, it, we either we, we can either leverage the O expression service to do that work. You're gonna have to kind of fight with the purity of entity type. Or we're going to have to drop one of these because we're not using all of them anyway. Do you think we should to reflect <clears throat> our code first and then do the release next? Or we maybe we can finish the whole process first and find some time to improve our code? No, it's going to have to be perfect. We're not going to cut corners. Okay. I know you want to be done, but we can't. <laughs> we're gonna have to do it. We can. We're gonna have to do it right. I know what you're thinking, Sam. I was thinking the same thing. As soon as Hassan started down, oh, we can't do that because the standard won't allow it. I was like, we've got five lines of code. Just leave it there. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, we sh that's I exactly mean, we how chaos gets born. Yeah. We finish all the steps, but maybe we can postpone the release until we have the improved codes. Well, well, then if we, if we're gonna delay the release, might as well just do it. Might as well just do it. <laughs> yeah. Look, 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 look! This is how chaos code is born. People are that close. Mm -hmm. Instead of putting in another four hours or six hours to do it right, they'll be like, "Oh, let's just do it this way." Yeah, and we're gonna we, lead by example, haven't we? We have like, to. If we if we can't follow it, then. How can if we we're not following else? the standard, then how can we go out there with a straight face and tell people follow the standard? <laughs> I mean, to me, it's more I am more interested in being in doing things right than being done. Done is gonna happen one way or another. But are you doing it right? All right, people, we're almost at the top of the hour. I appreciate both of you. And uh let's let's connect Monday, 12 p.m. Specific standard, o'clock. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> talk, to, talk to you later. Take care. Bye. Happy Friday. Friday. TGIF. TJ. TGIF. <laughs> Go. <laughs>